Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We have a special episode today. We have three Lobners. Yay! Say hello, boys. Hi. Hi, my name's Jack. I'm, I'm a kid. Come on. Who are you? I'm Elle. All right, and we're going to talk about Chapter 15, Section Ooh. 4, Aggressors on the March. Jack, who is this gentleman right here? Another ball guy besides your dad. <laughs> um, he's the leader of Japan. What's his name? His name is Hito. Okay, tell me about Japan. Um, Japan wanted a Pacific Empire, and they, they attacked Pearl Harbor because America was blocking their path, it, and they attacked in 1941. All right, so we're going to learn a little bit about why Japan is going to have to fight America a little bit later in the next chapter. And Alex, tell us about your favorite TV show. Okay. World War II is in color is a great show. Real footage of the war like tanks, planes, and bombs. Better than Full House. Better than Full House? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's better than Full House, Alex. You're wrong about that. Okay. Oh. All right, you guys get out of here. I'm going to no. actually do no. this now. Go away. Ah. Nice job, people. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is Chapter 15, Section 4, Aggressors on the March. And here on the left, we have Benito Mussolini, the leader of Italy. We have Adolf Hitler, the leader of Germany. And my son said Hirohito, but he's wrong. Get out of here, you guys. <laughs> Making me lose my train of thought. All right, um, and that was Hideki Tojo. So let's talk about this section. Um, so Japan... They were a democratic government, but they are going to be taken over by the military. And the Great Depression was affecting Japan, and it opened the doors for the military to take over. And they saw an end to their problems was through their military taking over other can countries to expand um, towards the West, take over China, and pursue other countries as well. Uh, when they did invade China, the League of Nations uh, said, you can't do that, that's, that's, that's not nice. But they did not punish Japan, and other countries took note of this. Uh, here are images of the Japanese invasion of China, and these are Manchurian soldiers that have been caught and are about to be beheaded. Uh, as you can see in this map here, here's Japan, a small island nation with not a lot of resources. Uh, they're going to take over Korea, which is right here. They're going to get Manchuria in 1931, the northern part of China. Eventually, they're going to spread into um, the rest of China here. And they're also going to take out Southeast Asia. Uh, this is Vietnam today. Uh, Indonesia will fall into their hands, as well as the Philippines. And later on, they're going to attack Hawaii. Now, Italy also had ideas of, of setting up an empire, and theirs centered in Africa. It was Benito Mussolini who wanted to get revenge for Italy's defeat in 1882 when they lost to the Ethiopians. So there was a massive invasion launched in 1935, and the Ethiopians appealed to the League of Nations, and the League of Nations, again, did relatively nothing. So Italy invades with a modern army, and the Ethiopians were no match for the Italians. Um, as you can see in this headline here, two towns in Ethiopia were bombed. Italian planes spread their death in, uh, in a sudden attack. They used poison gas on, on innocent people. Um, devastating attack. And again, the League of Nations did nothing. And Adolf Hitler was, was paying attention to this. He could, he could see these other countries being aggressive and nothing happening to them. Countries were preoccupied with the Great Depression. They were concerned with World War I and the ramifications of that and didn't want to get involved in another world war. So in 1935, Adolf Hitler, only in his third year in power, is going to secretly rearm. And when, it does, when it's no longer a secret, the League does nothing. Uh, the following year, 1936, Germany is going to test the French uh, and the British by entering the Rhineland. And France and Britain did not try to stop Hitler. And what Hitler said later on was, this was a test. He's going to put soldiers here in the Rhineland. If England and France stand up to him and say, get those soldiers out, they're too close to France, then he would have removed those soldiers because Germany was not in a position to win in 1936. When they did nothing, he knew. He could keep pushing and pushing and pushing, and they're not going to stand up to him. 
So that opened the doors for Hitler to get really aggressive. Um, 1936, also important year for Hitler because he forms an alliance with Mussolini. Um, and then again, the following month, he forms another alliance with Japan. Um, so now we have the Axis powers, Germany, Italy, and Japan. And these will be the bad guys in World War II. Uh, Spain is going to fight a civil war uh, in the second half of the 1930s, and this was a great opportunity for the Italians to test out their army, for Hitler to test out his new air force. So they're going to provide the troops, the tanks, and the planes to the, to the general of the, uh, of the Spanish, Francisco Franco, who is going to lead Spanish rebel troops against the Democratic Republic of Spain. And Franco is going to set up a dictatorship with the support of his new allies. Um, here's evidence of the uh, of the devastation that occurred in Spain. This is Guernica, Spain. We see a bombed out city. Meanwhile, the United States is is far away, separated by the Atlantic Ocean, and they have a policy of isolation. Um, they remembered World War One. Same with the British. Um, they wanted to avoid political ties with other countries. Um, and the British adopted a policy of appeasement, giving in to an aggressor's demands. And the symbol of that appeasement policy was Munich. Munich is a city in Germany. And at Munich, Neville Chamberlain and the leader of France, um, Daladier, are going to meet with Hitler when Hitler says that he wants to take the Sudetenland, which is the part of Czechoslovakia that is right here that has three million German citizens. And the, uh, the Czechs have no role in this, no say in it, and these countries will give Germany what he wants, which were very important uh, military installations along the Czech border and gives Germany access to taking over um, the rest of the country later. So that is the policy known as appeasement, giving in to an aggressor's demand. Uh, before that, Hitler had already taken Austria, his native country. Uh, France and Britain had promised to protect Austria. They did not. Uh, Britain and France give Germany the Sudetenland and Hitler is now on course to start taking over other countries throughout Europe. So as we can see, here's Germany. Also this part right here, which has been, Poland was given this part uh, after World War I. Austria is in the hands of the Germans. Uh, Czechoslovakia will fall to them. And eventually we'll see Denmark, Netherlands, Belgium, France, and Eastern Europe will, will come after that. So, British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain announces, I have peace in our time, I've achieved peace in our time. Uh, six months later, uh, Hitler is going to take the rest of Czechoslovakia. Italy, an ally of Hitler, will take over Albania. So, next on, on the docket for Hitler, he wants Danzig, Poland, which is the Polish corridor right here. Um, he believes his German people are threatened. It's just propaganda. It's just a stepping stone to take over the rest of Poland. So what Hitler does first, though, um, remembering the two-front war that the Germans had to fight in World War I, um, not, never again does Hitler want to fight a war against France and the Soviet Union, so he signs a non-aggression pact with the leader of the Soviets, Joseph Stalin. No intention of honoring this down the road. Uh, according to this pact, Germany will take over half of Poland, the Soviets will get the other half of Poland, and more importantly, this alliance allows Hitler to continue taking the rest of Western Europe and not have to worry about attacks coming from the East. So it's going to buy Hitler time. His plan is to take over all of Europe and then get his sights set on the big prize, the Soviet Union, which we'll get into when we talk about World War II. All right, so that is going to conclude Chapter 15, Section 4. Uh, next video will be the beginning of World War II. How exciting.